You know, that was probably the best decision I ever made was to get involved with a community event like this. Only because of what a lot of people in the past did give us the opportunity to do what we do today. And you know, you can't forget that. You can never forget that. You know, this nation right now is, is in a lot of turmoil. And, and I think we have to rely on our foundations of what we're, where we've come from. And this is one way to do that, is just to celebrate our, our freedom. I was told one time by a director at Fireworks by Grucci that Norfolk had the largest per capita fireworks display in the nation. And that says quite a bit for a town the size of Norfolk. You just performed for 30,000 people and they're screaming and hollering that they loved it and you know they're gonna come back to your next show. You just get chills up and down your spine and down your arms and it's, it's just the thrill of hearing that crowd go crazy after the last effect has hit the air. Makes you tear up a little bit and realize just how very fortunate we are right here to be able to be in celebration. And the one thing that I would hope we always have is Big Bang Boom. There's this gorgeous park in the middle of Western Norfolk that has a huge lake. Every Saturday closest to the 4th of July, we bring in uh, 20, 30,000 people to watch fireworks and it's all day long. It's just become a tradition since 1976 and we've just, we hope we've expanded on it and made it that much better. I mean, we're always, looking to take it to the next level. We're the hub in Norfolk. We are the, the biggest town within two hours. And so some people from your smaller communities come here because we're the big town. So we're excited to put on a big town show. It, it brings surrounding people from our community to say, hey, there's this one event every year that we do we cannot miss. Skyview Lake was kind of new at the time. It wasn't, hadn't been around for very long. So uh, they says, you know, this is a great backdrop. So let's use Skyview Lake. We've used it ever since. That started something 40, 45 years ago that celebrates on a local level our independence. Just a little man-made lake has become quite a place. And just like Norfolk, I think we have a lot of great things to talk about. Boom is just one of those that sets us apart. The chairman before me, his wife was really involved. And we were sitting up after a day of setting up fireworks up at the top of the hill. And I think I was probably pulling the security nights because we had to be, we have security there 24 seven. And I think I volunteered to, to spend the night at Skyview Lake watching everything. And she came out and she says, you know, someday you could be in charge of all of this. I said, oh God, no, no, there's no way that I'm gonna volunteer to do this because I knew what was going in. To it. It was a big event. And believe it or not, the following year was the opportunity I got to take over as chairman. And I've never forgot that to this day. I had the opportunity to turn that down. And I said, no, nope, this is going to happen. This was the first display set piece that we used with the, you can actually see the Eagles uh, legs and talons grasping a flag staff, and then the flag draped down below it. There were four panels like that, 10 feet high, 10 feet wide, another one over here, and two more up at the top, all transported to the shoot site on a uh, truck that lost all the boats on the way. We had a float in the 4th of July parade downtown Norfolk. We were dressed up with uh, our patriotic hats, we had a small cannon that was firing red, white, and blue streamers. And uh, we're serving lemonade to kids on the route as well. This photo also shows how the flag set piece was arranged on the ground and then lifted into the air by about 10 people, all coordinated at different spots. The flag stood 22 feet tall and 20 feet wide when we were done. 
Back in the very early 70s, as a young man, I became affiliated with uh, Orville Carlyle of Norfolk. He was the inventor of the reusable model rocket and a pyrotechnics buff, and Orville took me under his wing. We worked together for the next uh, six years. Orville was known for his interest in rocketry. Back in the early 50s, when Sputnik went into orbit, uh, a lot of young men were fascinated by these rockets that could fly to outer space. They had a tendency to make homemade devices that ended up with poor outcomes for the young man in their hands or limbs and things like that. Orville saw that and he thought there was a need for a product that allowed young men and women to fly rockets safely and to be able to reuse them. So Orville used his expertise in pyrotechnics uh, not only with shell building, but with rocket motors. And he developed a small black powder rocket motor that was approximately two and a half inches long, about the diameter of my thumb, and patented it, developed a rocket kit to go with it, made out of balsa and cardboard. And he contracted with uh, Zenith Fireworks from Clinton, Missouri, to produce these rocket motors and commercially sell them. Here's Orville receiving a trophy at one of the Pyrotechnics Guild International Conventions. And Orville with one of his larger skyrockets. Orville was recognized by the National Rocket Association and the Smithsonian, and to this day, his model rocket is in the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. In 1976, literally, the fireworks show came back from South Dakota from the warehouse up there to Norfolk, Nebraska in the trunk of Orville Carlyle's Chrysler New Yorker. We thought it was a pretty big show because we had four massive cartons of, uh, of uh, Class B pyrotechnics at the time. And it was a big show for Norfolk, biggest we'd ever had here. Interesting letter from a viewer who had seen the fireworks display. And she told us how much she appreciated all the work that went into it by myself and a lot of other people and how much they enjoyed Skyview Lake. Went into detail as to how the exact dimensions and everything were laid out in the construction of the flag set piece, as well as how the floating rafts on the lake were put together with all the pyrotechnic devices. Rich Brothers was the original vendor for the program at Skyview. They put out a display catalog. Not only did they have an order form in it, but they also had a listing of different packages that you could buy. And they started out as a small program of $100 and went up in size from there. Um, as a young man, I poured over the pages of these catalogs for endless hours. The Rich Brothers Interstate Display Fireworks Company from South Dakota was the supplier of pyrotechnics for the program. This is the actual invoice from 1977, the second year the show was done at Skyview Lake, for $1,456.65. A uh, number that pales in comparison to today's budget. Since then, it's moved from the trunk of a vehicle to a tractor trailer, literally. The JCs handled the show from uh, 1976 through. Uh, 1983. In 1984, Shopko stores came to Norfolk. Shopko partnered with the JCs and financed the project and in fact brought in a company from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Discontinued that in uh, 1990. I got a call from the JCs and they asked me, would you be interested in picking up the mantle and running with it again? And I said, well, it's a little bit too big a project for me by myself, but I said, I know a company that I'll bet would do it. I had become affiliated with the fireworks by Grucci family from Long Island, New York, doing uh, displays in Omaha, Nebraska, and some other parts of the country. To my great pleasure, the JCs and fireworks by Grucci were able to ink a contract. For me, it was probably the pinnacle of my pyrotechnics career was to be able to bring a Grucci crew into Norfolk, Nebraska, and do a fully choreographed, with music, uh, show that uh, was well laid out, planned out, and something that we had never done before in Norfolk. We did the show, it was a short show, it was like 15 or 19 minutes, and everybody was concerned about, as such a short fireworks show, it's not gonna be very good, and that type of thing. And I remember when the show 
finished. The fire truck on site provided fire protection, started running the sirens and lights, people hollered and their car horns honked, and it was just absolutely gratifying to me beyond words as to how wonderful it was to see people appreciate a, a true power musical fireworks show. The Grucci family out of New York was the first vendor, big vendor that we had, professional vendor. And it was a choreographed show, so you had a guy from New York that would be talking in one ear and you'd be pushing on the buttons and it, it would be fire one, fire two, and just kept rolling and you had to have your thumb right there and pushing. There was two, rate, uh, two tracks. One track had the cues on it, but at the, and at the same time, the other track had the music on it. So at the radio station, they would play the music and the general public, if they brought their boom boxes out at that time, everybody carried their boom box around, uh, they could hear the music score to it, which really added a whole new dimension to it. The other track was our cue. So whoever is firing this show has an earplugs in or, or a headset on, and you had to wait for them to say fire three. So as soon as you heard fire, you fired it, but you had to make sure reference number three, fire four, fire five, fire six, you had to be ready to go. That's how the system worked at first. We were carrying steel pipes around. We were creating uh, what we called batteries, where you put plywood together with steel frames, and then you had to fill them with sand around the pipes. You couldn't get sand in the pipes, but that allowed you to tip the pipes wherever you wanted because they were in sand. But it doubled up as a safety factor because if something blew out, that sand buffered it and stuff like that. It was a tremendous amount of work. All of the Fireworks are staged in an area, and a formula is used to calculate the distance to the crowd for different types and sizes of fireworks. For example, a three inch shell that goes up and makes color only needs to be 210 feet away. But many companies, when they have a three inch diameter shell that goes up and makes a loud report or a bang in the sky, that distance is expanded. And that's all done with the idea that should there be any type of failure with mortars or that type of thing, that if it does happen, that the crowd is safe and still held back a safe distance. Now imagine this, you have a hundred buttons on a, a push buttons, little black buttons. They're all numbered and Doug would put a headset on and I could barely hear what was being said, but you'd hear fire one, fire two. Fire three, Doug would push each and every single button. A lot of times between four and 600 cues. So somebody's grabbing this box that your finger is on and changing out cables. You were probably 50 feet away from these shells going off and you felt every single one of those things going off. Originally, we buried 24 mortars in the ground, loaded those mortars by hand, used a railway flare to light the fuse and retire to a safe distance, as they say, lest the blast annoy you. And uh, we moved from that to an electrical firing system when Grucci came to town. The, the program has grown and, and matured markedly in the 45 years that it's been here. Along the way, the program had become nicknamed Big Bang Boom, and eventually became, the event became known as Boomfest. Uh, and that transferred responsibility from the JCs to a whole new entity called Big Bang Boom because it was such an overwhelmingly large project to do and took the skills of a lot of people. I sat down at a, at a JC meeting and was informed I was in charge. Oh, by the way, we're $14,000 in debt to Grucci's in New York. And we're three months before a show and we don't have a contract with them. I had to really form a relationship with Donna Grucci herself. And about three of us went out to the bank and borrowed money to pay Grucci's off in order to get another show for that year that's three months away. We can resurrect this, we can make it better than what it ever was. And that's exactly what we set our hearts on. Said from day one, we're never going to let this happen again. We're gonna make sure that everything is put in place and we pull off the best show that this community could ever see. We are a nonprofit 
corporation that was formed specifically to put fireworks on. You know, a lot of times you'll hear people say, so is it the city that does it or who does it? Well, it's a community and we truly are volunteers that put in the hours and put this together. There is a board of directors, there is an executive, you know, committee, but there's also just 30 volunteers that meet every month. And then as the event gets closer every week to make sure that we can put on something that's really great for this community. We have bylaws and everything that goes along with a normal corporation. Uh, our bylaws allow 40 Big Bang Boom members. We also have junior boomers, so that's all of our kids. We will meet once a month, usually on the first Sunday of the month. Uh, we'll get together, we'll talk. We have a to-do list, which is like a page and a half long of things that we need to do by this date. I remember going to a meeting in the dead of winter, February, cold, snowy, blowing outside, dark at night. And of the 32 members of Big Bang Boom, 28 were at the meeting. We truly become a family with this group. Um, none of us really can say that we're related, but uh, you know, we're, we're a family, we're a core group. It's a real commitment. The week of boom, we kind of expect you to take the entire week off to help set this whole thing up because uh, it doesn't just happen. Welcome to Skyview Lake, the site of Big Bang Boom, and on Saturday night, thousands of people will be here watching the largest fireworks show in the area from the other side of the lake. But today, we're going to show you a different angle of Big Bang Boom. We're taking you inside the restricted area to show you what it takes to put this event together. When you come to Boom Fest, you're going to have a day-long picnic opportunity to bring your family out, to enjoy fair food, if you want to call it that to enjoy some entertainment on the stage. If you have youngsters, bring them out for an inflatable midway. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of military static displays that you can go see. We bring in LifeNet helicopters, so you can go look at that. The fireworks of Skyview over the years have seen a uh, large change in both the length of the celebration during the day uh, and days leading up to it, as well as the crowd size. Our original program was essentially a picnic type thing where families could come out in the evening, maybe seven o'clock. And uh, we had a crowd in the park of around 10, maybe at the tops, 15,000 people. That was in the early days when things first started getting rolling. You know, over 20 years of being involved, it is amazing to me what has changed for the good. And that is a bigger festival feel. We decided we wanted to do bands. So it was now trying to figure out, okay, we need a stage. You know, there's currently a, a stage there that, that we were, you know, able to get donated and, and sweat equity in that and put up. But before that, we, we would go out and have Volcraft bring in semi-trailers. All those type of things have made for truly a big event that people look forward to. And it's some of it's technology. Some of it is just, we keep thinking, what can we do to make it the next best thing? You know, when we were little kids, we did the fountains and we did the, we did the little poppers and we did the, the little things that went up there and you know, brought some color to it. And you didn't see a lot of colors, you know, in, in, in days gone past. But the history of the actual pyrotechnics part of it and the history of the actual firework, which is simply a device that is full of gunpowder, these fireworks colors have really evolved over the years from simple greens and whites and blues to pastel colors and different effects. With the advent of computerized firing systems, you can precisely decide what shell is going to go in the sky at a particular time, where, and what effect it's going to have. So that puts a big onus on the designer to have everything scripted out in software and chosen so that it goes exactly at the right time. You know, technology impacts everything and, and fireworks really aren't any different. You have this centuries old fireworks plus the new technology that we've got. If you could cut the top off of a shell, you would actually see the star laid out in the shell. An electric match will hit a 
quick match. It goes in and lights a lift charge. The lift charge actually pumps the shell up to its allotted altitude, which is generally about 70 feet per inch. So if you have a six inch shell, it's going up 420 feet and that's where it breaks. But the effect may be 10 or 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, depending on what the shell is. The number of fireworks shells has grown immensely. I remember our first program, shells are, are measured in the inches in diameter. And uh, for us pyro guys, a six inch shell, that's, that's a nice bread and butter shell that we like because they do a pretty good job in the sky. We had a whole 12 uh, six inch shells in that first show and nowadays it's many, many, many more. From playing with fireworks as a kid to entertaining with fireworks as an adult, what a thrill. We get the opportunity to blow stuff up on the 4th of July for the right reason. It just, it doesn't get any better than that. I have tried over my time Whatever we're doing is Big Bang Boom, to market it as Big Bang Boom. We've got a logo. We've got a great name. There's this guy named Wiz who always thought it should be called Boom Fest. He wanted a big fest. I hated the name. I was sick for one meeting, and my husband came home from the meeting like, we voted for it to be Boom Fest. I'm like, of course you did. I was sick. It was the only way he was going to get it done, because he knew if I was there to explain to everyone that it's horrendous branding, it wouldn't happen. And in fact, you know, in the world of 2020, when we weren't able to have a festival because of the coronavirus, I have come up with the slogan that we are all boom, no fest. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. I'm Jennifer Griswold. The first positive case of coronavirus in Nebraska has been confirmed. Confirmed. Lincoln is canceling several spring and summer study abroad programs. Today That's just from one of several outbreaks in meat Catholic packing plants in and Iowa and Nebraska. That are also shutting their doors an event Friday night. Today, a team of other media outlets will investigate. We want to get this right. Around 1% of the Nebraska population. We want to make sure that we're doing everything from even commencement exercises. We're looking at how would we do that virtually. Well, right now, there is not enough to do the general public. They are aiming how this will affect our community. The camaraderie I've, I've built with my vendors. I've probably had the same 12 or 13 vendors for the last 12 years, maybe 15. And it is amazing to see how these people function. I mean, this is what they do on a, on a weekly basis is go from show to show to show. It's really kind of fun to talk to them, ask them where they've been, and then in return, hear how they'll brag on our event. Because they'll tell you that our event is probably their biggest show of the year. So, you know, in, in 2020, having to change what we're doing, it's really going to hurt these vendors. And it was, it's hard to talk to those people and not having them be able to be at the lake. So, <clears throat> cause they're family. So tell them next year. I think I can upset. <laughs> the fact that our Boom Fest group was willing to make every effort to bring it to the community area. I know there was a lot of discussion that went into it. Where's the right place to try to do this so that everybody can enjoy? Allowing families and friends to get together in a safe way when the rest of the world was kind of in a really bad position and everyone was at home. And I think it gave people a feeling of normalcy, even though it was a different year than what people expected for the fireworks. Wednesday is when we really start to work. We get all the fencing up. We start pulling out racks, uh, get the trailers there that have all of our equipment and supplies, whether it's roping, fences, poles, signs. So as you see here, this is pre. 
example, this is pre-show. I have my book with all the layout in there and I'll tell us how many racks of each size we need to do. Here, we only need like the four or five, five inch racks that are right on the back. The next section here is probably empty. From there, we'll start setting out the racks and, and start getting those laid out. Next will come, you know, we'll bring product out, things go live. Uh, security has to be 24 seven. This is what actually fires a firework off. And that electric match is into an E-match connector. So that's where it goes to the shell. Our crew drops these shells as such, makes sure they hit bottom, and then that's ready. Now what from there, we have what we call field modules. So a field module now has that address on here. So that firework is plugged into the field module. There's 16 of them that go into here. So every shell that gets shot up is gonna to have to be plugged into some kind of a, an address somewhere. That address is plugged into here. And what'll happen is this field module is gonna get plugged into a cable that goes all the way back to the shoot site or to the shoot table. And then these field modules get plugged in to each other. There's a number of different stages to the show. Right here, we have the five inch shells. All of the five inch shells tonight are gonna go up in pairs. Then we have finale spots. We have four different finale spots, whole bunch of different shells in a finale spot. Then we have four inch shells. Then we have three inch shells. We also have six inch shells and we've angled them a lot of different directions so that the whole entire crowd gets a spread of breaks over here this crowd gets a spread and the crowd maybe over here gets a spread so we try and switch those up just a little bit and at the right angle so that they're not touching up in the sky that's going to fill the whole sky with the breaks If you belong to Boom, you also have to get trained. So there is intense training that goes along with it. You cannot handle or be on a shoot site where there's pyrotechnics involved unless you've gone through the intensive training. You have to be a licensed pyrotechnician with the state of Nebraska. So now you have to go and take a federal test and pass it in order to be on our hot zone during the actual shoot. What we're trying to do today is finish our script and decide everything we need as far as making sure our star sponsors are all listed, figuring out the timing of how long each of our dignitaries that come, we you know line up, the governor is speaking, our state senator, the mayor, and then we have an opening prayer that we start with. So my job is to build the script that says, this is where we're talking, this is when this plays, and figure out what our timing is that leads up to our star sponsorship and because when we do the star sponsor and the national anthem that's the first time fireworks go in the air and we just need to know so the shoot team is ready and says okay we know next we're going to have the rockets red glare and we know next we're going to have a five star sponsor and so that's what i'm doing today it's just writing our script getting it all timed out ready to go so when we hit show time at 9 45 we start and it then it should just coast easily by following the script that i've written at least that's the goal once you get on this committee, your whole way of listening to music is different because we'll be driving down the highway and hear a song and I'm like, oh, I could picture, this is a slow one, so I can picture really, you know, big, soft ones falling. Or I will be driving and my husband will go, hey, what about this for Big Bang Boom? And we're like, yeah, I could see fireworks going off there. So you don't listen to music normal ever again once you're in the fireworks committee. And so that's what we do. We try to find the songs that are going to be, tell the story of our show. You come up with a music score 
that you know the crowd or you think the crowd is going to like. And of course, our theme always needs to be kind of centered around Fourth of July, patriotic songs. We do something very specific to what's happening, whether it's the Norfolk 150 and songs about Norfolk, Nebraska, uh, the year 2020, we uh, did a COVID montage that included, uh, you can't touch this and uh, don't stand so close to me and the end of the world as you know it. So we try to do some things, different montages of things that fit in with whatever is happening in the world or in our community. From there, what we need to do then is we send it off to JM Displays. Now, JM Displays, they're located in Yarmouth, Iowa, so they're real close to us. And a lot of times we road trip over there. And Mark, he listens to the music a few times. And this is the interesting thing he likes the music. So, what he does, he sits at his computer and he hits the space bar every time that he wants a shell to break. And it marks it and then comes back through the computer program. And he's like, that's right. I wanted that one to go off there. So then if I put it in there, the computer then knows, well, if you wanted a Camaro to go off at this point, it takes this long to get to the sky and this long to break, which means it needs to be shot this many seconds before. It's, it's an amazing program. Nothing I could write or do. But that's how the, the choreography happens is that he sits and studies the music and listens for where he wants the beats to hit and uh, all the way through. Your budget goes a lot further with J&M Displays. Your satisfaction and peace of mind is our top priority while delivering a spectacular one-of-a-kind show. So no matter what your event, we'll design a display that's perfect for any venue, large or small, rooftop or indoor ballpark or on the water. Put your celebration in the hands of experience with J&M Displays. Our choreographer is so good that if we say, let's add Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA when he actually sings Born in the USA, we can have a U and an S and an A in the air as he says them. That's how close he can bring those to them because they have a back time to them from the time they're launched to the time they're going to break. He can actually make it say that when it's hitting in the air. If you watched a fireworks show in slow motion and you see a wall, and wall, what I mean by a wall is a whole bunch of stuff going up at the same time, you couldn't do that in the early years because you can't light a firework that fast. Timing isn't that good. So with the fuses that there are and the things that burn up to 40 to 100 feet per second with fuses, uh, you can do 10 shots per second if you watch it in slow motion, they all go just like that, you know? But to the naked eye, they all go woof all at one time. We're doing continuity and making sure that the machines are talking to each firework, which is really kind of where we send us, we actually send an electric charge out to every single shell, but it's a low enough vo voltage that it's not going to fire it off and, and hit the gunpowder, but it actually does a continuity and comes back to us and says, yes, I'm here and I'm good to go. So we go through the entire list of shells one by one and make sure that there's continuity there. And if there's not, then we go and fix the continuity problem. F out. E out at F. E out at F. Thank you. Two seven full. Good. Two eight A out at B. Good. Two nine full. Good. Two A A out at B. Good. Okay, guys. Systems down. We have four shells to check. So, so do you get an error message or do you just, just get, get an X? So get an X. X you can get an equal if it's good and you get an X. If it's bad. I gotcha. Okay. Well that's interesting. Well the OFF the one was out. One seven zero line was out with me. Just half of it was just half of it was out. Same with the four six was out. One five nine, it looks good, so it may be matches. Okay guys, we are gonna do a status check. One five nine. First. Still clear. Oh, no. Sheen's oh, hot, guys. Oh, yeah, that's fine. OFF. All right. Okay, guys, system is down. Continuity is 
Congratulations, guys. Good job. What size shoulder? Mr. Fireworks himself lives with us, and Big Bang Boom! People are so excited for this. That, you know, we're not having the fest, but we're definitely gonna have the boom. All boom and no fest. <laughs> we have commemorative t shirts made. You can order them online on our Facebook or our website. I will tell you, we do have the largest fireworks display in Nebraska on the 4th of July. I know, this I've year. been telling everybody that. Yeah. And it's you, certifiably the biggest this year. And you can hear it right here on US Navy. Every year we uh, offer some VIP tours of the behind the scenes of all the fireworks, all the setup, all the equipment, everything that kind of goes into the show. We lay it out to them. And show, but those VIP tours are intended for our major sponsors. So a couple of our big sponsors, Newcore Steel, Norfolk Iron and Metal, these type of folks. So a behind the scenes tour is really kind of cool because most people don't get to see the firing system, how all the fireworks are hooked up, and then all the stages of them from the from the main bodies, to the cakes, to the finale change, to our walls, to our special effects and stuff like that. This is our star sponsors list tonight. One, two, three, four, five, and just a buck. What we're gonna do, because I have it on another cable, we're gonna go to number one, and right now there's shot one. So one shots, 32 of them left. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold this button. <laughs> and then when I say three, two, one, you're gonna pull that trigger. We got a couple minutes here, so just enough time to get a little bit more nervous. <laughs> Don't mess this up, man. You ain't gonna mess this up. We ain't gonna let you mess he this up. He won't mess it up. And then we're gonna look up and we're gonna watch that thing break. This one is gonna break with just a big poop. It's a four inch titanium salute. It's the loudest salutes they make. <laughs> it's not gonna be a big ring or anything like that. It's just gonna be a big cup boom. I'm a pretty oh, shoot. 45 seconds to test shot, stand by. This is exciting. <laughs> this is what happens at the beginning of the show. I'm ready to push a button. You got the clock, you're seeing it? Don't worry, I'll help you. I'll do your <laughs> countdown because I want you to watch it leave, okay? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire. <laughs> Wow. Good job. How many more Good of those job, you want to do? <laughs> then we just add a couple more test shots throughout the day. So we try and do them on the hour, uh, six hours before the shoot time. It kind of gets the crowd in, 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 in all over town because we are using four inch titanium salutes. They're the loudest salutes you can do. So they're going to be heard all over town. So it just gets everybody excited. Hey, boom is tonight. Just heard another test shot go off. So it's really kind of fun. Show, show folks what we do and let them push one button and see what it's like. You're all aware of what the social distancing rules are, that we have asked everybody to stay on or in their car. If you go to J&M 1, you're going to hear everything at shoot time. That's fine if you want to listen. We go into complete radio silence at 9.45. That is the shoot channel that is life and death, literally. That is what our shoot team is using. And so if there's a fire, if there's somebody hurt in the shoot team, that is what is used. So it is total radio silence. The only people talking on there are the people that are putting the show on. No, I, I grew up playing with model cars and I'd strap bottle rockets to them and send them down the street. And then I would try to stage it so that when this bottle rocket went off, the next one would go off and it would just go farther. And then I was like, you know, that's, that's pretty cool, but it needs something more. So I'd strap a fountain to it. So I'd have these rockets going off and it's shooting sparks out the top. I'm like, it still needs more. What more can I do to it? So then I'd strap smoke balls to it and stage everything. A lot of training. A lot of practice, a lot of testing, a lot of fun. 
2009, I joined Big Bang Boom. And that was kind of the best thing is because I can be behind the scenes. I know when things are going, I know what's gonna happen just to face the fear and go for it. Okay, turn it on in five, four, three, two, one. Oh my God. All right, guys, five minutes before, just like Terry said, we're going into radio silence now, guys, okay? Life, limb, or property, give it to the shoot crew. Let's have a good time, guys. Right before the show, we call for radio silence. So that is, we don't want anybody talking on the radio. Reason being is the shoot team, the guys that are down on, in and amongst the fireworks, have to have an open line of communication to whiz in the command center. All right, guys, what I will do is I'm going to try and cue you on the eight inch shells and I'm going to try and cue you on the cakes. We have 13 sets of cakes. I will say stand by for cakes 13 or whatever as the numbers go. OK, I don't know if you have a plan to go in there and light them if we get delayed. If one doesn't go, it can be delayed. Who's got the torch? Yeah. You on a set of cakes? OK, so I will now try and start. give you a 30 seconds to finale. That's your guys' cue to back off. We have pairs of fives, fours, threes, sixes galore, and those eights all going on top of the finale racks. It is one hell of a hot finale tonight. Don't get too close to it. If something goes to hell, you guys know, stop the show, stop the show, stop the show, and then we will communicate how much time we need. You guys have got to be my eyes in there, okay? I gotta know what's going on, because I'm nervous as hell in there. I'm not so sure if Mark's on the east end, he doesn't want to be more maybe by the light tower, the corn side. because those trees are gonna block everything, the corn side. Because then you can see up, the smoke right. shouldn't be going towards you. All right, bring it in. All right, everybody, Let's have a safe shoot. Safe shoot on three. One, two, three. Safe, safe shoot! shoot. All right, hugs. Be safe, All right, yeah. Have fun, guys. Be safe. Oh, yeah. Have fun. One guy goes in and you're followed by another guy. So if something goes wrong, you have each other's back. Everybody else on that team fills in and covers all the areas again. They come back out. Everybody goes back out. Those two guys came out together and report as they're going in, as they're going out on the radio. I'm going in. This is what I'm seeing. And if they have to stop the show, we stop the show. It is so cool to watch this all happen and all come right back out and everybody's still safe, but everybody on the shoot site knew exactly what was going on because we have radios and earplugs in and you have each other's backs at all times. Welcome to Big Bang Boom, a celebration and fireworks of the independence of the United States of America. Tonight, you're going to experience Northeast Nebraska's largest fireworks display. And now live from Northeast Community College in Norfolk, Nebraska, we turn it over to our hosts, Don Wisniewski and Angie Stinger. Well, welcome to Big Bang Boom, where this year it is all boom <laughs> and no fest. You know, normally we're at Skyview Lake right now wrapping up a huge day of festival activities, but not this year. Uh, that's right, because of social distancing requirements, we had to make a change to the celebration, but did not want to have to cancel this entire show. Or, you know, I didn't think it worked to really do a big Zoom meeting that everybody could watch. No, I don't think Zoom would have worked at all. But, <laughs> but let me tell you, though, a huge, huge thank you goes out to Northeast Community College for helping us be able to keep this tradition alive. Once we get approaching showtime, we get our verbal cues from the sponsor as to what countdown we're having as far as minutes before we actually initiate the program. Once we get that cue on our firing system, we go ahead and play a uh, musical track, which is fed to the broadcast system, and another track of hidden codes, which actually tell our firing systems what to fire in the sky. We pretty well nervously sit there and watch a computer screen as that fireworks show goes off being prepared for any th problems that we might have and making sure that all the modules are firing their individual fireworks as they're supposed to. We're all watching the clock and because we all try and be pretty precise with this. When we say a show's gonna be at 10 o'clock, it starts at 10 o'clock, so we get the countdown. I get the word in the ear, show in three, two, 
one, go. And I'm pushing one button. And now everything has to be synced up. Big Bang Boom extends a hand of gratitude to this year's exclusive five-star sponsor, the teammates of Nucor family. It's time for a fabulous five-star salute. We got some good spreads on those, good spreads. I hollered at you, but this, I, I did this not switched anything. to channel two. Oh my gosh. And what? I heard all the first part, but then when I went to say stop the show, or at least find out where the eights yeah. were, it was on channel two when I checked. That's a, it just, oh my gosh. Well, we found the one bucket, it's laying in the record field. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll find it in hard They were protected. Oh my God, that's, that's, a that's a finale. That's a finale. Woo! 
Yeah. Too bad we can't do that every year. Maybe we should. Nine didn't go. Nine didn't go because I turned to those guys and said, Your cake sack didn't go down there. During the first finale, after all the cakes were done, we had one go here. Ben Bennett lit one. No, I'll Yeah, no, it was after that. Far side. No, on this side, the one went on its own afterwards. Okay. Toward the when we see that last piece of pyrotechnics come up on the script and it shows fire and it shows show end, we breathe a pretty big sigh of relief because we're professionals. We want to see things go in the sky when they're supposed to. It's hard to explain that adrenaline rush. And I find myself doing this after a show. Bring in the donation barrels, all come back to the broadcast center and people come to the broadcast center. And it is a matter of now cleaning up and ending, ending the night with uh, putting all the equipment, helping Nick load up all his equipment so that the speakers and everything can come down. There could be uh, a shell that even though it ignited, didn't lift, it could still be going and it just uh, all of a sudden, just out of the blue, would take off and go. So we keep that 15 minute cold time. Then after that 15 minutes, we go down, we clear the electronics out of there because those are the high dollar stuff. Uh, get the wiring picked up, and then once that's all gone, then and we clear the tubes, make sure that there's nothing live or left over. Sometimes you, on a finale chain where you have 10 or 12 shots, maybe one or two of them won't go for whatever reason. You got to clear those out, and we either get rid of those by shooting them, or we collect them and, and hold them in the bunker for another show. There's a live shell. We basically cordon off the area, make sure people stay away from it and they're aware of it get too much of our body over it. So I've cleared this row, then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna check the center row. Point nine, we got five now that I've got that clear, I'm gonna come over here and check this row. Minding that I have stuff behind me that's not cleared yet. I know. Watch out for these, yes. Clear. We really strive on having great communication during the shoot team with all the shoot team during the show. It's so important for us to all to be communicating and we have protocol in place. If something goes wrong, it's stop the show, stop the show, stop the show. It's not just one time so that you understand. Because if somebody asks, stop the show, what was that? Oh, it's too late. Those guys' of safety is at my, it, it's at your forefront at all times. I don't want to have to answer to their wives or to their families what happened and why it happened because I'm in charge of those shells going off and if they're not supposed to be going off, I got to make sure they're not going off. So we have a couple teammates that are actually on the committee. So they always are grateful. They always come to us and tell us thank you for sponsoring the event. Um, last year when things were up in the air and the committee got together and decided to still try to do something at the college. Our teammates were first in line. We had to draw because it was so limited at the college um, who got to go and they signed up pretty quickly and everyone was really excited to have something to do during the pandemic times. And although it wasn't the same feeling, we got a lot of thank yous for hosting that event. Since they incorporated it in 1999, we've been one of the top sponsors every year since then, but we were also sponsors of the event prior to Big Bang Boom being incorporated. So as long, as far back as Don could remember, we've been a contributor to that event. Fundraising for Big Bang Boom is a real challenge every year. You know, you can figure about so many dollars are gonna come out of a community. Back in the day when we first started and, and started Big Bang Boom, it was a different story. We had just come from the JCs. We were starting our own thing. We had zero dollars in the bank. So um, can you say hot dog feeds and at the mall Christmas wrapping, uh, lots of work, lots of sweat e equity by our core group of people that started this. Over the years has grown from uh, $1,500 the very first year in fireworks to over $40,000 in fireworks alone and then continuing for everything that we pay for from porta potties to mailings to uh, just making sure we have everything covered from fencing. We get a lot donated and we appreciate the in kind, but we really do need that fundraising. We get together as a group and, and mail out thousands of letters to all the businesses in Norfolk and some surrounding 
it's kind of neat to see that over the years, people just know and, and the checks show up. It's PO Box 1094 and boom, and the money's in the, in the PO Box. And we put a program together years ago that we call our Star Sponsor Program. So it's different levels of giving from one through five star sponsors. Our one star sponsors include A, B, and C. We name them all off and we holler out, shoot team, give us our one star sponsor salute. And it's usually a star. So we do star patterns, shells up there, try to send something up with them to wake the crowd up, you know. We, we love using our 49 quick spring salutes because 49 salutes, the ones that go up and just go bang, go up in three and a half seconds and then a star bursts right up above it. The donation barrels at the park, it's we say just a buck makes it happen. And we truly mean it. I mean, when you're talking about 20,000 people at the park, if every single person gave a dollar, just a buck, that's $20,000. And we would have almost half of our budget met per year. It's a way to show appreciation. You know, if you liked what you saw, kind of like when you're out eating, if your waiter did a great job or waitress did a great job, you know, you want to leave a tip. So we just ask that, that uh, people leave a buck. Actually, I think we got a letter one time from a gentleman uh, whose name was Harold, and he said, told us how much he loved it and mailed us $1. So that year, because I thought that was really sweet, we gave him a special shout out. <laughs>
So we did, we went at 9.30 instead of 9.45 and seven minutes into the show, that storm took a right angle turn into Skyview Lake and it was awful. Hell broke loose, the thunder, lightning, downpour rains. We had to shut everything down. We never even got to the show. We had to quickly cover everything back up and we had people scrambling to get to their cars because we listened to somebody that really wasn't informed about the weather, said we could get it in. We listened. We don't do that anymore. That was probably the biggest thing because it was, we had a lot of scared people and people trying to get to their cars and then trying to get out of the park. And that was very, very trying time to say the least. I think it was the next year after that to make up for that, we put the song from Ario Speedway Riding the Storm Out as our opening song for the show. Just, you know, pay homage to the, the year before. So I found this effect and we started calling it angel wings and it's really simple fireworks that we've had for years, but we never thought to position them the way that they're positioned for this effect. And I saw it, I'm like, dude, that's so easy and that's so simple. Why have we not done this yet? This was 40 foot spacing. So this is the actually did one. This is the test that they tested for us. So this is 40 millimeters. Product of 40 feet apart. But this is just a half of one. They didn't do both sides. Hmm. Then they went to 50 foot apart. 30 millimeter gold glare comets at 50 foot spacing. Oh my God. We're at 30 foot spacings. So we ended up going 30 and we pushed it pretty close. And they, by specs, go 240 feet. So we had to have crowd at 250 feet. We have a crowd at 264 feet. So we got our good on distance, awesome. but ours is going to be a little tighter. Well, he calls it a front. So this is facing the crowd. Okay. So we're going to go mark those angel wings as far as FMs. Three, one. Sides. Should have been holes on both sides that way. Because, but they can all, that typically that's that tower thing. So they're all oh, okay. typically point in one direction. Right. They're not, for the most part, never used for a ground effect like this. 
So this ain't showing effect. You should have another 90 down there. No, that one's actually 15 degrees back. Oh. So what it does, it wraps around oh. and creates that loop okay. coming back up. So this is going to be kind of cool because that center one, you know, the only thing I'm concerned about is this one's going to come off the ground, you know, a little bit higher than the other side. Mm -hmm. But I think from a distance, it's going to look should, the same because be they won't be able to really tell the difference of the hill. Right. But starting at 15, 30, 45, and so on, this gets to 90. So this is straight up, that one comes back. So it's just going to make a real cool what well, we're like calling angel, an angel wing. An angel yeah. Wing. It's going to be another mind blowing show, the Boom Fest 2021. You know, after last year moving it to Northeast Community College and going through the pandemic, and now we're coming out of this thing, and it wasn't that many months ago that we got the green light to bring this thing back to Skyview. So that's when it really started off is okay, how, how big are we going to go? What are we going to do? So on and so forth. We have got to give this community a reason to come out of the house and get out into you know, to seeing each Absolutely. other and side by side. So we said, okay, we need to make this show bigger and better. We need to raise that bar like we always try and do. This year is actually the longest duration and the largest budget of fireworks we have ever had. It's exciting. I mean, it's to be able to pull that off for everybody to watch is just a, a, a exhilarating. It's awesome. This is the midway area that I'm standing in and there'll be in flip bounce houses, about 13 bounce houses. We'll have about eight food trucks, um, catering people come in and, and sell food. So we kind of make it an all day event. And then from here up to the main shelter, we'll have more food vendors, the stage area. And also we'll, we'll have over on the south side of the lake for those people that walk in over off of Prospect, we'll have about uh, five food vendors over there as well. So we kind of spread things out in the lake because people end up sitting in a lot of places and we're just trying to make it convenient for them and, and help these people out who actually vend. Once we're set up and we start having people show up and watching the excitement on the little kids' faces and, and the parents enjoying the day, uh, it really, it, it's really fulfilling to, to watch this all unfold on the north side and, and how it becomes a full day event. Guys, how we doing? Good. Things are looking good there. That's all wired. It's connected over here. Going to finale number four. Cake number two. We have our splitter here. All right, now we jump up to our fives. Main splitter comes off to two sets of fives. That's all good there. All right, we're good here. We are looking good out here. This is awesome. Table one has 32 shots, two has 99, three has 94, 99, and five has 99. That's the table we want. Yeah. Direct connection, BD equals one, correct? Uh, or zero? Zero, 1200, 1200 baud. Okay, zero, that's what I needed. 
There we are. Beautiful. That's what I needed. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Show is loading. We've had situations before where there is a technical difficulty, like for some reason this, this isn't going, the audio isn't going out, they're not hearing it across the lake, something's not working, but that means we are then sending dead air to radio stations, to the TV station, out over the park. Now, instead of the radio station playing the music at the station, we're playing it with our equipment on the shoot site and feeding it over to the other side of the lake to the radio stations via phone lines and fiber optics. Nick Pierce is a gentleman from Omaha who used to work with Mannheim Steamroller. He does sound production across the world. Uh, last year, he was in Tokyo doing a show. Then he was in Boston. And on July 4th, or July 4th weekend, he's always in Norfolk because he is the one that, ha that we have hired but with a lot of volunteerism behind him too, to come and uh, make sure that everybody at the park can hear. All of my feeds originate from the command trailer. And then from there it goes well through this fiber underneath the lake to the radio stations and, and TV stations on the other side of the lake, all 900 feet of fiber that direction. The challenge with fiber optic is it's a piece of glass. So we are literally putting light down a piece of glass that gets converted into information and, and spread out. It's fairly fragile, but it's it delivers a very clean signal, which is what we're going for. We don't want any hum or buzz or anything like that. It comes across Skyview Lake under fiber under the lake and to the system that then sends the music out into the park and to all the radio stations. And that music is then, as you're listening, you're seeing, when you hear the word love, there's probably a heart breaking in the air at the exact same time. With Big Bang Boom, we've always tried to broadcast the show over the radio. So early on, uh, we would go out and, and solicit to the three radio stations at the time of, hey, what can you do for us? You know, best deal scenario uh, to get us so we can have your station broadcast our show. What I kind of thought as we're sitting back and kind of arguing at the time, we had somebody that was from KNN and, and, and you know, other radio stations represented. So I sat back and have no idea. I'm technology very, very stupid said, why can't we have all three? And the room kind of got silent. And they're like, yeah, why can't we have all three? Because then we take the three proposals on the table and you each get to do everything you said you were going to do on the three proposals from airtime to, to being out there, remotes from the lake, those things. I pre-programmed all the everything down below in bank one for colors. So as soon as I hit R, that's a red shooting at the lake right now. That's a green shooting at the leg right now, a blue and a purple. And now if I go back to Last year we were thrilled to be able to pull a show off because this committee got together and said it was gonna be a cold day somewhere and we didn't do a show in this community for our community. So we went to work and found a place to do it. This was Northeast Community College and it worked great, but we had to change the whole entire show last year. It was an aerial show. Skyview Lake really lends itself for pyrotechnics on the water, on the shore and in the air. This is where it belongs. We put so much infrastructure into this and we know how to lay out a great show for the public. He was the face of the show when you entered the park. He was typically the first guy you would see in our Big Bang Boom shirt when you when you came in that main gate. Putting together our brochures, and being a pain in the ass with that, because um, he was he was such a such a stickler for details. He had quite a few complications. Uh, he'd been sick for ten months, recovered from everything that had gone wrong, except for his heart. Past December 21st, 2020. Steve is an amazing guy. He will be forever missed. Heart of gold, anytime you needed anything, he was always willing to jump in, help out. He was such a people person because he was a pastor for so many years. There's nobody like Steve. We're all better for knowing him for sure. My dad saw how much I absolutely loved doing this. So he's like, hey, I want to be a part of that too. 
and he knew the position I was in and the dangers that I can face on the shoot site. And he and I always had just a little special moment before I had to be over there in radio silent. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to miss that. And he loved this group. You're like family to us. And he loved the American flag. We present to you a clean United States flag made in America. Here's to Steve and all of you. And rest assured that Steve's memory will go on as well as the Uzel family with a perpetual two-star sponsor honoring the U.S. flag on behalf of the Uzel family from all of our families to your family. Thank you for what you've just presented tonight. You know, it, it's nice when you have that kind of relationship with other committee members that they can bring up his memory in such a positive way. Love and care for you and your father, and they know you that well. I mean, words can't put in to what that means. This is what Boom is all about. Family, friends, and putting on a hell of a show for Norfolk and the surrounding area. And we thank every one of you guys that have anything to do with this event coming up this weekend. Thank you. We weren't even sure we were going to be able to have it at Skyview until a few months ago. So that's when the plans really kicked in really hard as far as what type of show we we're going to have. But coming out of the pandemic, we are just really anticipating the biggest crowd we've probably ever had out here because we are making the show bigger. We're making it longer. And it's time for folks to just get out of the house and come out and enjoy everybody. So we're really anticipating coming out of this pandemic that this show is just going to be phenomenal and it's going to be well attended. Boom Fest is back at Skyview Lake in Norfolk this year after last year's event was converted into a drive through firework show. KCAU 9's Jason Taktajian explains what's new for this year's event and what the event means to the Norfolk community. Wisniewski told me this year's firework show will consist of effects that spans 600 feet across and the entire firework show consists of around 800 cues to set off the pyrotechnics. This is Anderson. Stand by for a five minute to pre-show cue in five, four, three, two, 
one, five minutes to pre-show, stand by. Last, last show, uh, emotions are running high. Just gonna miss these guys, but I'll, I'll still be around, so I'll come out, give them a hard time. Everything's gonna go well, so that's the, that's the best we can ask for. think we're short a fire extinguisher. We do. I do have an extra one. You can give me that one. Um, we do have an extra one here. This goes to Terry. This is the 2021 Boom Shoot Team. And it would only be appropriate that there's a little <laughs> fireball in it. Oh yeah. <laughs> So on behalf of this shoot team, it's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much. Good crowd to the wild folk to get here. Looks good. They really filled in off the dikes, not really. I mean, no, I'm surprised. There yeah. is, but this actually looks good over over here too. This really filled in good. Okay. Good luck. Just real quick. Thank you. Love you. See you later. What's just about to happen and the expectations of that crowd is, I can only imagine, is so high. And I'm about to push that button and put on a world-class show for 30,000 people. We got to make sure this happens. We got to make sure it's right. We got to make sure it's safe. It's going to go like every other year. We know the routine. You guys know where you're going to be at? Yes, and we don't have any buckets. We do not have any buckets to worry about. We do have plastic that probably should come off some of the stuff. You all know we go live at 945, pre-show, so on and so forth. Uh, Conover has the first three cues. I'll cue you up. I don't have much else to add, guys. You know the routine. Uh, we just put on a good show for everybody. When you're doing a show for this many people, it's no room for mistakes. Things have to operate perfectly. We're expected to do things right. This is such a high profile show. When that thing goes, there's no room for mistakes. Ever, all the testing, everything that we've done up to this point has got to work. Godfather, we're here in your presence and we're asking for your protection this evening. We bless each person here, giving them your, your peace and the knowledge that you are, you're caring and protecting them. All right, everybody. We want to hear from you first. Be safe tonight. Be safe on three. One, two, three. Be safe! Ten minutes, ten minutes, ten minutes, ten minutes to show time, guys. Ten minutes to live, guys, ten minutes to live. When you start talking about the show starting, it's it's kind of gives you goosebumps. The hair stands up on the back of my neck in, in anticipation, because I know what's coming. Uh, and everyone sitting around has is, is come possibly from miles away and packed into our lake. And we literally get to the, that point of the night and we can't get around on ATVs. Um, if something happens, it's, it's on your feet. You got to go. So when you feel this energy from all the people sitting around and, and packed in tight, uh, it, it just gives you this overwhelming feeling of what we've done all week is coming to a, a climation of, of this is going to be amazing. 30 seconds, stand by. 30 seconds to pre-show. Welcome to Boomfest, a celebration in fireworks of the independence of the United States of America, presented by Big Bang Boom Incorporated. Tonight, you are going to experience Northeast Nebraska's largest fireworks display. And now, live from Skyview Lake in Norfolk, Nebraska, we have several dignitaries, as you can see behind me, uh, right here in the command center with us tonight. Happy Independence Day, everybody. Isn't this great to be able to be together with other people and to be able to celebrate our nation. And it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us tonight to be able to remember why we're celebrating Independence Day. I'd also like to recognize Terry and Yvonne Zwiebel. Mm -hmm. uh, you might not know this, Terry's been a firefighter for 43 years. He's, the, uh, he's been a state fire marshal and a city fire marshal for 
uh, 30 of those years and 25 years as the Norfolk City Fire Marshal. Interestingly enough, as the show starts and we see the shells count down on the computer or we're firing manually with buttons or anything like that, the last thing in the world we're really thinking about is the audience and about how this is appearing to everyone. We are focused intently on is this product firing at the right time in the right place and is it done safely? And ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for our star sponsor salutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna try and do our shots one more time. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going, going to need. try our star sponsors one more time. Give Shoot 30. team, can we try our star sponsor salutes? The shoot team needs 30 more seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, the shoot team needs just a few more seconds to do a few last minute uh, checks. How much more time, guys? We're trying to buy some air time. 10 more seconds. We may be skipping that. That's fine. Don't give me too much more time. All right, give it a try again. Here's our four stars. I got nothing. That's our five star. We got no, we're just going to have to go with to skip it because there's nothing we can do with it right now. Make it up sometime. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. We're going to try to make up those star sponsor salutes here in the very near future. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment that you've all been waiting for. We ask that you sit back, relax, as Big Bang Boom now presents Northeast Nebraska's largest fireworks show. Okay, stand by, Ben Conover for cue number one. Armed and ready. Did that nut, that full chain go on the salute? It did not all go. Stand by for those three cakes. Conover, you got them? Get ready. Not every firework show is the same. Not every firing system is the same. How somebody can take this music and they go, oh, this effect would be awesome right here. Let's do this. And just the technology Five seconds to water carpets. Five seconds, water carpets. All right, keep a close eye on those guys. Great spread on those water carpets. Let this day forward be celebrated with bonfires, illuminations, and things like that. And to me, there's nothing more patriotic than the display of fireworks on the 4th of July. Very pretty, very pretty. Lights and sound and feeling all coming at you at the same time, but you have to keep your composure to be able to say, okay, I need to get in here safely. How am I gonna do it? Can I do it? And I mean, the, the angle of the tube to make this thing do that, or okay, this shell is gonna go 200 feet in the air and it's gonna have a 40 foot spread. So if we have this one angled this way, how can we get them so they're almost touching? but they're not touching, so they're not overlapping, but they're not too far apart that you're looking over here and then you're looking over here. It, it just amazes me and I love being a part of it. Okay, it's talking, it's talking, we're looking good. And there's just so much action at one time where all those that go up into the air, I mean, you're, you're looking up into the gods, heavens, and you're seeing all color of lights. All right, we're going in to take care of this fire over here on the west side. Okay, keep talking to us. It's our way of honoring America and giving the, the community of Norfolk and the surrounding area an outlet to come and, and celebrate. Coming out. Thank you. We owe so much to our founding fathers and to be reminded of that every year is just a, a real privilege for me. And I enjoy seeing it and hearing it as well. But it, it has a lot deeper meaning as well. It goes back to the roots of our nation. Shifting down, shifting down. Next walls are almost two minutes away. You have two minutes. Let's get in and hit it before it gets too big. What's the next cake position? Let me check. Coming up for pretty quick right now. Ten seconds to first angel wings. Ten seconds first to angel wings. The 45th anniversary finale is queued up. Here we go. Cheap team quiz, we're ready. 
Remember, everybody's expecting a big finish. Let's give them what they all came for. Shoot team, this is the hottest finale we've ever had. Make sure we've got each other's back and keep your distance. But when I'm near you, I feel flat. Then it's over and the adrenaline just takes you it's so hard to explain that adrenaline afterwards you shut that key off and you step outside the trailer and you hear that cor the crowd roar that's our thank you that's what brings us back every year that's what that's what makes us think what can we do next year to raise the bar and make this thing better the amount of time and effort Wiz puts into the show, I don't think anybody realizes what it is. I mean, the dude's always thinking about stuff. He's got thousands of dollars worth of, of show. He's got thousands of people to entertain. He's got thousands of dollars worth of equipment out there. On top of that, he's got our lives. Because there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people listening, watching, waiting. You don't want to be the one to disappoint them. The the width of his shoulders to carry all of that, do I think I could fill his shoes? No. I don't think one person could. He's just, he's whiz. The blood, sweat, and the tears that go into a show like this from start to finish is the biggest thrill there could be. It's kind of an emotional time because you're still <laughs> still really pumped. And it, that's, that's the good part because everybody's slapping you on the back. We actually care that we put on the best show that, that, that Northeast Nebraska, maybe even Nebraska has from the start of the day of, you know, setting up and then ending with this rock awesome fireworks show. That's our goal. Make it finish so strong that they go, I gotta see what they're gonna do next year. You look back and think, wow, we did that with such a small community, but I think it is because the people take great pride in being here and take great pride in wanting this to be a place where people can grow and raise their families and be successful. Every police officer that's out directing in a corner, every fireman that's in a truck has taken the day and not been with their family. So that's huge. So really a hats off to all those people that make it behind the scenes that don't ever get talked about. Thank you for what you do. When it comes to Boomfest's future, I hope it doesn't change. I hope there's a younger generation that's ready to take over and help pull off 
our community's biggest event that we have every year. I absolutely loved working with the people of Big Bang Boom and always trying to push the limits and come up with something new, something different. I can't say that I'd ever walk away. I mean, again, I'm getting goosebumps knowing that, you know, this event is just, it, it, it's amazing to put on. Just hearing the crowd erupt at the end of it, it's just like, yeah, come back, let's do it again next year. It's, it's a feeling that, unless you're part of this group, I don't think you're gonna be able to fully fathom just how deep that hits and how incredible it is after the show. Everybody goes through life thinking, what am I going to leave behind? And I hope maybe someday when I'm gone that my legacy might have been, he was that crazy guy that liked to blow stuff up, but was a major part of creating a, a tradition in this community that started a long time ago and is still going. So maybe, maybe my legacy is being part of a great Independence Day celebration. And I really look forward to sitting in the crowd and seeing what the next level of Boomfest looks like. I consider it to be a privilege to have been the first chairman for the first fireworks show at Skyview Lake. I had no idea that we would develop a tradition like we have and under the stewardship of many people who've dedicated a lot of time and talent towards it, uh, it's grown exponentially. It's my hope as the original chairman for the fireworks show at Skyview that the tradition lives on for generations to come so that today's children, when they grow up and have their own families, they can bring them to Skyview Lake on the 4th of July and enjoy the same things that we have to remember that it is marking the birth of our nation, that that's the true meaning behind what we do at Skyview, and that we can enjoy that time with friends and family to mark a truly special event in our nation's history. So I hope to see it go on for generations to come. In 1776, after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, John Adams wrote a letter that he said he believed this day would be celebrated by future generations with pomp and circumstance, parades and illuminations. That is fireworks and that is why we celebrate Big Bang Boom and the independence of America. Where are we at again today? Going. We're at the Big Bang Boom. Can you Big say it? Bang say everybody come out, we're having fun. All right, bye friends, bye. tell everybody bye. See ya. Bye, see ya. We're out here, it's Big Bang Boom Week. Getting ready, we're laying out the, the show here. Main bunkers going Main up. bunkers going up. Wiz, we got some cool stuff this year, right? Hey, we do, you know, we got, you know, when we do the Husker games, yeah, we're bringing some of those effects to Norfolk this year. Nice. Hello, my name is Don Wisniewski, president of the Big Bang Boom, which is a nonprofit organization made up of 40 volunteers who collaborate the entire day-long event out at Skyview Lake with live bands, frisbee golf, water fights, and multiple food vendors, and an impressive inflatable midway for the kids of all ages, topped off with a fabulous fireworks display. Big Bang Moon would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your past and future support in helping make this world-class event possible for Norfolk, Nebraska. Of course, I don't play in a band, so I didn't realize there was like 45 minutes of setup in between each one. <laughs> so, so here I got these band members all mad at me because they want to get tuned in, they want to be perfect, and I'm going, come on, come on, we got to move, you know? My kids have never missed a Big Bang Boom. They may not remember their early years because they were babies, but my kids have been at every single one, you know, and maybe with any luck, maybe one of those are going to take over and be chairman of this thing one of these days. We've got Mayor Josh Moaning. Mayor Moni, thanks a lot for being here. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I think everything that can be said by a politician has been said, so I'll be, <laughs> I'll be fairly brief here. We are all boom, no fest. So all in honor of Don Wisniewski's love for boom fest, which I think should just be called Big Bingo. I grab a hold of the ball on the bottom of the crane and I pull it back a little bit. And all of a sudden, I pull myself up onto the ball and I'm headed straight for these two guys and perfectly timed 
I go, cause I came in like a wrecking ball and smacked them. You're gonna stick around cause you're part of that pre-show, right? Yeah, where, where do I go for that? Just right here? In the trailer. <laughs> On the inside? <laughs> Who else is gonna be in there with me? In the Governor, <laughs> Senator Flood, the mayor, it's me, Brian, oh, Nick. Wait. You said I got 60 seconds. I can I can offend a lot of people. In I know. <laughs> I know you know the difference between a prayer and a sermon. We want a prayer, not a sermon. This is a demonstration of a piece of quick match that burns about 30 meters per second. And put an electric match to it and show you how quickly that two and a half foot piece of quick match actually burns. Using a nine volt battery on the, the electric match. We're ready. Fire in the hole. And you even got the smoke. Great job by the Boom Fest committee again. Another great event. We thank them for being a part of this each and every year. That's the key. Stay underneath the flag for the shade. Nice and shady Those underneath there. The right idea. Good show, buddy. Good show. Good show. Last, last show. Last good show. show. And you know we had to bring the fire truck yeah. in tonight. <laughs> well, you got to do that on the last one.